I drew when I was a, a child, did a lot of pencil drawing, and then in high school took a lot of art classes in high school, and then I went to VCU. Uh, I did watercolors and uh, pen and ink and scratch board. I combined all those techniques when I work on my paintings. Mm -hmm. We had a project and we had to use that particular kind of paint for the project. But I had all this paint left over and I wasn't going to throw it out and I started playing with it. There's one process where I'll take and let the part, the paint partly dry and then I'll go back in and work it again mm -hmm. because it dries on the surface and if it's laid on thick enough it won't dry on the canvas. So you can literally move the surface and that gives you a, a kind of warping effect that I like. I'll take one paint and thin it down and then leave the other full strength and by doing that they layer going back to that technique where it's partially dry if you start messing with it after you after it's done that it'll let the the paint that's underneath which is a completely different color come to the surface so it gives you a, an illusion of depth by doing that the enamel paint lends itself to aquatic things. It looks, even when it's dry, it looks like it's flowing and moving and wet because it's that high gloss paint. I like bright colors. Um, I hardly ever alter it. I use it right out of the can. The Mermaid is, relatively speaking, it's a fairly good sized painting, but the Mermaid is pretty small and 95% of the time I have to show people where she is because you can't see her. Escher, he was an illustrator. The negative space was just as prominent as the positive state painting. The, the particular painting I'm thinking of, he had a school of fish growing, going to the right and going to the left, he had a flock of ducks and they blended right in together. So depending on which particular animal you were looking at, you saw ducks or you saw fish. And of course I do hide things in my paintings, uh, particularly the mermaids. Um, I don't try to, you know, they are the major subject matter, but you have to look for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it might take me three or four months before I'll stop working on it mm -hmm. because I'll keep seeing something that looks like a fish and with just putting in an eye or making the outline of a head or something like that, it turns into a fish. One of my very unscientific uh, theories of why, why humans basically see different versions of mermaids is because, for one, I believe that they're chameleons, that they can change their skin color to anything they want, just like a squid or octopus can. And two, they can mutate. They can make themselves look like the background. Not only do they change their skin color, they can also have fish swimming down their arms. And because of the distortion of the water, one person might see a mermaid and then the next person would see something completely different. I don't do these paintings for other people and that's probably the primary thing you need to think about if you're going to get into the, any kind of painting or sculpture or photographing or whatever. You want for yourself to like it. You want to like to do it and I love the painting part of it. If I don't like something I've done, I set it up on an easel, I spray it with turpentine, and then I wipe it clean, whatever I've done that particular day, and go work on another painting. I try to work every day on, mm -hmm. on something to do with painting. If I'm not actually painting, I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm.